nuclear power arose out of a group of scientists and engineers who harbored more than a reasonable guilt complex for the uses of their knowledge in producing the atomic bomb. And out of World War II, this guilt complex transferred to a hope that there would be atoms for peace. In 1952, President Truman's Materials Policy Committee issued a report saying that the country should go solar. And by 1975, two-thirds of all residences would be solarized. Unfortunately, two years later, under President Eisenhower, the country decided to go nuclear under the Atoms for Peace program. Some of our most brilliant scientists and engineers were behind that effort, coming out of the horrors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were deliberate targeting of civilians to use the military's phrase in World War II to, in order to, quote, terrorize the population and reduce the morale in the countries that attacked us. Just think of that. To terrorize the population. That's where that guilt complex came from. And there were many, many discussions privately between these scientists and engineers who came out of the Manhattan Project about how they could redeem themselves and the atoms for peace. I remember as a youngster being told that there would be a little bit of a atomized gadget in cars and you'd never have to fill up your cars with gasoline. Nuclear power was told to be too cheap to meter by a government official. When I was at Oak Ridge, I had a conversation with Dr. Alvin Weinberg, which extended in subsequent years. Dr. Weinberg was a great promoter of nuclear power, but he's extremely knowledgeable about its hazards. He wanted nuclear power plants to be built six at a time in a highly barricaded location run by what he called a nuclear priesthood, namely the best and the brightest. When I asked him who would be running the railroads and the trucking companies transporting radioactive waste, he got the message. But later on, he told me something very interesting. He said, if solar power ever came down to being only two and a half times more expensive than atomic energy, he would support solar energy over atomic energy. You can imagine the knowledge of risk that was behind that statement. We must remember one thing here. The uranium mines, the uranium radioactive tailings around those mines, the development of the fuel rods, the transportation to the location where the nuclear plant is, the creation of these nuclear plants with enormous complexities, the production of radioactive waste which still do not have a permanent waste disposal, and all the problems appurtenant to a deadly substance that had to be 100% controlled. 99% is not enough. It was, a, it was a technology that had one bite of the apple. All of this and the 
storage for tens of thousands of years of radioactive waste had one purpose to boil water to produce steam or other reactor designs to produce heat now the question that was very rarely asked in secret congressional hearings was aren't there other ways to boil water without all the continuum of risk involved in the nuclear fuel cycle. 